Hey and hello everybody, I am Unisions and I am once again back in my creative agrarian skies world. Hello, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Today I want to look at this little cool gadget with you guys. And it turned out pretty small, it still looks a little bit big but mm, yeah. It will be coming clear with what this is doing after I explain everything to you so let's just straight on crack in with the tutorial I will be trying to show you everything I may forget some things just put it down in the comments if I did but I'm going to look at certain sections firstly we are going to look at this little or generation process then at the core production process the packaging, the high oven, the deep tank, and finally the casting. So firstly we will be starting with the little ore production. It is basically made out of three pulverizers, some item ducts, an item collector, some autonomous activators, an oak sieve, a source of water and some kind of blocks to block it off. And don't forget your ignis extruder with a bucket of water and lava. So Let's start. This igneous extruder has an output to the back where it is outputting cobblestone into our first pulverizer. This pulverizer is accepting to the right, outputting gravel to the left and uh, sent to the top. There is an impulse, uh, some kind of item duct with the output, no redstone signal so don't worry about that. Um, then we over here have another pulverizer accepting from the back putting dust on the top and uh, sand to the left where we have another pulverizer accepting from the top and the uh, back and it's outputting to the side where it will be coming out uh, there is two servos needed placed on this where it basically whitelists sand and this one whitelist dust because here will sometimes have a random chance of getting sand and that sand basically you won't be wasting by just placing that item duck there and it will be automatically pulverized then we have five autonomous activators here you can do more you can do less it's really on to you those two are facing uh, to here as do to those two only the difference is those bottom two ones have the aim high option instead of the aim level and this one just faces up and it just has aim level and then it will just have a sieve in the middle and a little water source which is pushing the items towards the item collector you need a stream otherwise it won't work so please note that and the items will have to touch the item collector before they get sucked in and now you're asking why don't you use a vacuum hopper well firstly this is a little bit cheaper and you can basically do more things with it because the vacuum hopper sucks everything from miles away and sometimes that can be a little bit irritating if you have other items flying around everywhere and this item collector will straightly output into this crystal chest where we basically filter out all the or pulverized ores with a whitelist uh, uh, yeah, basically item duct which has some kind of redstone signal it can be from servos or from levers or whatever kind of redstone source it doesn't make any difference and this basically goes to a chest over here and we're going to tell I'm going to tell you in a little second what that is doing firstly we are going to look at the charcoal and power production over here we have a little 3 times 3 jungle sapling farm we have a an harvester and we have our planter and this is basically making ourselves wood which we can then melt down into charcoal which we will need for our high oven to run but now you're asking why jungle saplings well jungle saplings grow in 2 times 2 and that means it will generate a load of wood when they grow and we need to do as many wood as we can get so this is the most efficient we can have it 
and in the planter here down we have basically filled up every single slot but one so it doesn't have like 16 stacks of freaking jungle saplings you don't need that many and now quickly show off what this is doing we have an harvester here an impulse item duct which has some kind of redstone signal on the side we have three impulse item ducts going to barrels for saplings vines and jungle wood this jungle wood will be only coming to here if the furnace can't keep up and vines and saplings will be here if that planter fills up then we have over here on the bottom of this redstone furnace which is basically on the bottom of our harvester we have a vacuum impulse item duct or other kinds of item duct with a whitelist for jungle wood and the uh, item duct touching the planter has a vacuum uh, mode and it is whitelisting the jungle saplings then this furnace inputs from the bottom and outputs to the right where this little item duct is of where I'm pointing at now and this will go into the same chest as our ores from on top go and this chest will basically contain nine charcoal then it will crash it into a block of charcoal and all these ores it will package into the uh, basically categorized other things where they can be smelted in our high oven so it's basically our other packager here it needs power but it's basically turned back from where we are I can maybe show you if you can see it uh, yeah you can really briefly see the little crafting interface here on this side because it will be accepting everything from the uh, left and it will be outputting to the right so it just needs to be like the other way around and it will firstly try to make a 2 times 2 and if it doesn't work it will try to make a 3 times 3 and it will output into this chest then on top we have our steam dynamo on top of our auto packager it's facing into some of the hardened energy conduits and it's our hardened energy conduits because there isn't going to be more power going through them than this little steam dynamo can put out so yeah Upgrading basically doesn't affect everything because it won't put any more power out it if if it is another sort of item duct uh, Energy conduit Yeah, always messing them up, but To output from this chest you basically need an item duct with your uh, redstone signal and I've set this on vacuum because I need the char block of charcoal firstly to go in our steam dynamo before they will go into our high oven and then we have another item duct on top which is going into one of the scorched ducts this is on the little flaming thing where there's some blocks of charcoal still left and it will also uh, output to the top into some kind of chest it really doesn't do anything if it's another chest but you can do a normal chest you can do a crystal chest it's just your personal preference and this will also be connected up with a scorched duct with the little ingot symbol and that will basically input into this six slots and how higher you make your high oven the higher the temperature can be currently it is at 8500 degrees celsius which is quite a bunch and everything that goes in there it will basically be smelted right away I will try to show you just typing in or scrolling a little bit further uh, we for example have mm, if I find or as astral silver yeah lately there has been some strange ores in here I have noticed though I can't find the good ones oh here they are for example if we put in aluminum we can just do it like that and you see how fast they smelt yeah that's really going fast so yeah that's why I built it so big then here on the side we have another scorch duct but this is on the little arrow with yeah I don't know what kind of symbol you want to call it but it will basically output any waste 
and in this case it will produce slag. And I don't know where you want to use it for, but if you really want it, here you go. And on the bottom we have our scorched drain with a fluid duct and a red zone signal. It will basically input into another scorched drain, which basically inputs into our deep tank from Tinker Steelworks. Then we have the tank outlined with scorched bricks and the little walls out made out of clear glass with the exception of drains on the side for our metals. Currently we have 94 ingots of molten aluminum in there and 3 molten iron ingots. And over here we basically have just a little repeatable system. They are just separated with any kind of cover what you want. You can use it for decoration or whatever, but you will need this cover. Then we have a drain here. We have our fluid duct with any kind of redstone signal. I would advise a servo though because we need to whitelist the molten iron in this case anyway. So just put it on ignored and it will flow into a casting basin. And we basically have one of these little things for every single of the metals we are producing. So here we have gold, we have copper, uh, tin, this is the aluminum, nickel and uh, platinum lead and silver. So yeah, it doesn't have a specif specific order but you can just see so what just does fit you. So and then on bottom we basically have a little hopper chain. They are pointing into each other and just coming around here. And in the little time I built a system and tried to record this a time earlier but sometimes my microphone just fails horribly. And it is so yeah, I'm sorry. But it produced quite a bunch of things. And it's probably pretty cool to have. So yeah. I really hope though this little tutorial was helpful. If it was, please just help out grow my channel by leaving a like, subscribing, adding it to your favorites, and sharing it with your friends. Maybe it's helpful for them if they are struggling with something and basically just do it. So have a great day everybody. Bye bye.